Hi, back again. We have the first instrument that Bruce Weber built for me. This is a Weber Fern that has a number of special appointments on it that are available if you choose to have them on a custom mandolin. The top wood that we selected for this mandolin is cedar, and we did that because we wanted a very, very open tone and a dark tone. And we did that largely because the uh, repertoire that I was playing most of the time in the year I had this instrument built was classical and jazz. And the strings that the instrument was strung with were a flat wound string that has less string tension than the standard Foster Braun strings you see on bluegrass mandolins. That also contributes to the darker sound. This instrument also has some very special woods that were near and dear to my heart because they came from family heritage. The pick guard and the armrest in this instrument came from a piece of charcoal that was about the size of a cantaloupe. It was the last remaining wood from my great-grandfather's homestead cabin. Around 1913, my grandmother rode a horse that pulled the logs up the hill in a little town uh, or a little space outside of Greycliff, Montana. And they built this cabin and these woods were the only woods that were left after a forest fire burned the cabin down in 2003. And Bruce and his crew were able to salvage enough wood from that piece of charcoal to not only create this pit guard and this armrest, but also a pit guard on an octave mandolin he built me shortly after this instrument was built. This instrument has a radius fretboard, and the radius that I choose to use is an 8. Um, the most common Radius on, on fretboards for mandolins is a 10, which is a little more flat, but I prefer a little more of an arch, so I like the 8. And it also has a wider neck. I love the spacing and having room to move, and it gives me the, the ability to be able to work more comfortably with my hands given their size. The instrument was milled, made, other than the top, being cedar, out of relatively traditional woods. The back of this instrument is a two-piece back, and it's a maple back, as are the sides and the neck. And as you can see, it's a book-matched maple set that's very, very pretty. And you'll notice in the coloration that we used a sunburst. Um, this sunburst color was invented by uh, Brett, who is the spray person that they have at Weber, and he's an amazing finish person. This is called Desert Dawn, and it's a very gradual sunburst. And he did the sunburst on the front and on the rear, and you'll notice if you look closely that the pick guard has the same sunburst pattern to match the top, which is something that seemed to me to be something awfully hard to do, but this guy's pretty amazing with what he does with colors. This instrument also has some small devices on it that are not always on mandolins. We do have what is an invention of uh, Weber's, which is called a wood nymph. And it's just a device with felt underneath it that actually dampens the strings behind the bridge so that you don't get ringing noises. Helps a lot in the studio when you want a really good clean tone. It also has an armrest, which is very useful when playing the instrument in situations where you're hot. If you're playing in outdoor festivals or you're sweating, many of you will notice the kind of damage that happens to this corner of your mandolin after your arm's been draping it over for years. And the armrest takes care of that issue. And it not only takes care of that issue, but it also gives a nice, even place for your arm to go across that's not as sharp an edge as the ribs of the mandolin and the binding are as they go around that corner. And again, I also prefer to use the pick guard. That's, this particular one was made out of that special wood. But the pick guard allows me to play 
and keep an even depth on the pick when I'm doing things like duo style. So it gives you a, a way that you can actually keep the pick depth evenly regulated as it crosses the strings. So I do like playing with pick guards. There was some minor controversy many, many years ago about um, using pick guards and how they may obstruct the sound as it came out of the treble F hole in the instrument. And after years of playing with both with and without pick guards, I'm convinced, frankly, that it makes little or no difference to the overall sound of the instrument in the room. Um, the whole top is vibrating. It's not just the sound coming out of the holes that you hear. So from what I've noticed in playing live and playing mic'd and playing in the studio, I've heard virtually no difference in the sound of the instrument or the volume level as using a pick guard. And I do, again, enjoy the pick guard, and I also like the way that it dresses up the front of the instrument aesthetically as well. This particular fern has the traditional fern pattern that Bruce uses on his instrument, and this one is done in abalone. So there are a lot of really pretty blue and green colors in that. And I really kind of like that, that flashing gray, uh, green and blue glint that you get when it goes through the sunlight. I chose inlay markers that were small diamonds on this instrument to keep them kind of small and uh, to keep them very dignified. This instrument is a wonderful instrument, it's a classical instrument, and it's also very, very useful in Celtic music and in jazz. And really, like any mandolin, you can play any kind of music that you'd like to play on the instrument, but um, sometimes having different voicings and totally different sounds from an instrument can be very inspirational in certain styles of music, and they can also give you the opportunity to explore completely different tone colors and the kind of music you're creating. So this was the first of the instruments that Bruce built for me. Inside this instrument, there is one special feature that uh, one of our production people here today just thought that it would be a good idea I told you about. If you can hear it, I keep something inside this instrument. It's a rattlesnake rattle, and I caught that rattlesnake myself on an outing with Bruce Weber um, in the wilds in Montana and caught it with a stick. There's a YouTube video out there. If you go searching for it, you'll find it. And uh, those uh, rattles are now inside this mandolin, which makes it kind of special, too. And we'll go on to the next mandolin. <laughs> 